Safety test crashes are a good way to see just how powerful a collision can be. When tons of metal collide at high speeds, the force and momentum is incredible. Well, what are the physics of this kind of event? We'll find out in this segment of Physics in Motion as we look at collisions. So what makes a collision? We all know one when we see one, but in physics, it's when momentum or kinetic energy is transferred from one object to another. Kinetic energy, you might remember, is the energy of motion, and momentum is the quantity of that motion. When objects hit each other, the collision falls into one of two categories, elastic or inelastic. When two objects collide and do not bounce away from each other, that's an inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not. Some of the kinetic energy is converted into heat, sound, and deformation of the objects. In a perfectly inelastic collision, the objects stick together, so their final velocities are the same. Think about the qualities of our paintball collision. Why is this inelastic? Do the two objects stick together when they collide? Are they moving with the same velocity after they collide? In both cases, the answer is yes. Now, let's do a problem using our inelastic paintball collision. In our collision, the system is the paintball and the barrier. So our problem asks, what is the final velocity of the two objects, the paint and the barrier, in this collision? The paintball has a mass of about 3 grams and velocity of 90 meters per second. So it has momentum. The total momentum of our system before the collision is the momentum of the paintball because the barrier, which has a mass of 9 kilograms, is initially at rest and has no momentum. Remember, an object's momentum is equal to its mass times its velocity. We convert the mass of the paintball from grams to kilograms and get 0.003 kilograms. We then multiply this times the 90 meters per second velocity and end up with a momentum of 0.270 kilograms meters per second. When the paintball and the barrier collide, the momentum in the system must be the same both before and after the collision happens. The paintball and the barrier are moving together after the collision, so we add their masses to get the total mass of the system, which is the mass of the paintball, 0.003 kilograms, plus the mass of the barrier, 9 kilograms, for a total of 9.003 kilograms. Then we set the momentum of our system, 0.270 kilograms meters per second, equal to the combined mass of the paintball and the barrier, 9.003 kilograms, times the final velocity of the paintball and barrier together. In order to solve for the final velocity, we must divide the momentum by the total mass, and we end up with a final velocity of 0.03 meters per second. Keep in mind that this velocity only holds for the instant after the collision. Eventually, both the paintball and the barrier slow down until they're at rest at zero meters per second. The second type of collision, as we mentioned, is an elastic collision. That's when two objects bounce apart when they collide. Momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved, meaning the amount of momentum and kinetic energy in the system is the same after the collision as it was before the collision. Also in an elastic collision, no energy is lost due to sound, heat, or deformation, which is a change in the shape or size of an object due to force. In other words, dents, dings, and the like. Let's do a problem using an elastic collision with the help of Summer and Tom, and two rubber exercise balls. Okay, let's stop the video for a second while I give you some information about what's happening. Tom has a mass of 75 kilograms and is running at a velocity of negative one meter per second, holding an exercise ball. Summer has a mass of 50 kilograms and is running at a velocity of four meters per second, also holding an exercise ball. Okay, play the video. Now that's an elastic collision if I ever saw one. See how they bounced off of each other? 
If 50 kg summer bounces backward with a velocity of negative 2 meters per second, what is Tom's final velocity? Remember that momentum is conserved in all collisions, so we always start with that, which is p sub i equals p sub f. Now, let's determine the initial momentum by adding up the momentum of each person. Plug in the equation for an object's momentum, which remember is its mass times its velocity. We do this for Summer and for Tom. Summer's mass is 50 kilograms, and her velocity is 4 meters per second. Tom's mass is 75 kilograms. His velocity is negative 1 meter per second. We make his velocity negative because he moves in the opposite direction of Summer. Multiply 50 kilograms times 4 meters per second and add it to 75 kilograms times negative 1 meters per second. Summer's initial momentum is 200 kilograms meters per second, and Tom's initial momentum is negative 75 kilograms meters per second. When we combine those two together, we get a total momentum of the system of 125 kilograms meters per second before the collision. Our initial and final momentum must be the same, 125 kilograms meters per second. So, let's solve for the final momentum in the system for each of the two people. We plug in the values that we know. The total momentum is equal to 125 kilograms meters per second, which is equal to the sum of the momentum of Tom and Summer. Summer's mass is 50 kilograms, and her velocity is negative 2 meters per second, which we multiply together to get her momentum. The velocity is negative because it is in the opposite direction of her initial velocity, which we made positive. We also plug in Tom's mass of 75 kilograms times his final velocity, which is what we are solving for. We multiply 50 kilograms times the negative 2 meters per second to get Summer's momentum after the collision. We get negative 100 kilograms meters per second. We're solving for Tom's final velocity. So we add 100 kilograms meters per second to both sides of the equation. That's the first step in getting Tom's final velocity by itself. We end up with 225 kilograms meters per second on the left-hand side of the equation and the expression for Tom's momentum on the right. The final step is to divide both sides by Tom's mass of 75 kilograms, which gives us Tom's final velocity of 3 meters per second. The final velocity shows us that they also bounce backward and move in the direction opposite to their original motion because the sign of the final velocity is opposite the sign of the initial velocity. Got it? Because this collision was elastic, kinetic energy was conserved. In this segment, we've learned how the term collision is defined in physics. And we've looked at the differences between the two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion, and we'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.